So, what makes you happy? It's a very simple question, or is it? Who here is feeling happy right now? Put your hands up. Fantastic. Who's feeling inspired and positive? Brilliant. That's everyone, pretty much. What about if you were forced to sit here, and instead of feeling inspired and positive and hearing from all these incredible speakers and hearing about happy holes, instead you were force-fed all the very worst things that were happening in the world: evil, hatred, negativity. How might you feel then? Well. Who here has read a newspaper or watched the news recently? We've already heard that no news is good news. But what about soap operas and dramas? Who's watching the latest drama of women being brutally murdered by children with hammers and picture frames? It's depressing, isn't it? I believe that we are on the tipping point of change. 2012 is a time for us to come together and look at doing things differently. We're starting to realise that instead of working in silos and competing with one another, actually let's work together, collaborate, share ideas and resources. It's a time to respect one another, the people that are around us and the world that we're living in. So, I'm going to ask the question again: What makes you happy? Put your hands up if it has something to do with people. Loved ones, family, friends—that's a lot of people. Keep your hand up if it's something to do with what inspires you, what interests you. Everybody's hands are up. This is good.、Um, from all the research I have read and studied, I found that happiness is about making connections with people, with what interests us, what inspires us. We don't need to fill our lives with all the bad things. We actually should define our lives in terms of what's important to us, what makes us happy. So I'm going to just carry on without the technology.、Uh, <laughs> A few years ago, I was sat in the audience at my first TED event. I remember sitting there and seeing all these incredible speakers、what? who were. Oh. <laughs> Do we want to see the film? Should we go back to technology? Okay. What makes you happy? Okay. What? <laughs>、uh, Sunshine. Doing things. Well, with my job, doing things that empower other people to then do something that they love. Life. Each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh air and sunshine.、Um, yeah, I'm making some time to relax and think about them. To walk in Hyde Park in the sunshine with my granddaughter. I can only think about ice cream. There's no other thing. No, I'm different than that. I was going to be really corny and say my boyfriend Philip. That's so、oh. corny. So I'm going to go with choice. Whoa! Did you hear it? Yeah. Thanks, Dean. So you've already answered the question, but、um, what I found is that people tend to think that what makes them happy is to do with people and connections and, and what's important to them, what inspires them. I, I haven't yet heard anybody talk about. What they've read in the newspaper or watched on a soap opera, and I haven't heard anyone talk about how much money they earn or the number of hours that they work. I think we are starting to realise that it's not all about material things.、Um, with the increased affluence in this country, has come increased depression, anxiety, and stress. So it really is time to reconnect with the things that are important to us and what makes us happy. So as I was saying before, a few. Years ago, I was in the TED audience, and I was looking at these inspirational speakers who were very passionate about what they were doing and really cared about what they were up to. And I remember sitting in the audience and thinking, 
If I was on that stage, what on earth would I talk about? And I'm on the stage, so I'd like to share a little story with you about what's happened since then. So I used to have a, a good job in a great company. I was fast-tracked as a potential future leader and got to work with some incredible people and great ideas and technologies. But there was something missing. I started reading lots of books on happiness, connecting with meaning and purpose, and I booked out a three-month sabbatical. I saved up, it took me a couple of years, but um, took three months off to take some time to think about what made me happy. And I ended up in Thailand in, um, doing some volunteering in a, an orphanage called Dream House. And these are a couple of the kids on the stage. The orphans there had gone through horrendous ordeals. They'd seen their parents tortured, murdered. They had um, been abused, been abandoned. They had had to be child soldiers and escape using guns to protect themselves. A month before I was there, a neighboring orphanage actually lost 60 children in the middle of the night, stolen and sold into child trafficking, sex and orphans being used for organs. But the children here at Dream House were so happy. I couldn't believe it. They weren't fearful. They weren't um, preoccupied with everything that had been happening to them, feeling sorry for themselves. In fact, they were so happy, they shared their love and hugs openly and warmly with everyone who came to visit them. Jordan here is 11 years old and can speak five different languages, including English, which is lucky, because I couldn't speak the other four. Um, he'd learnt the languages as the different orphans came in. He wanted to be able to communicate with them, to make them feel safe and part of the family that they had there. When I spoke to him, he often used the word grateful, he was grateful to meet people, grateful to learn, grateful to be amongst friends and who he considered family. When I commented on the fact that he seemed grateful, he said, yes, teacher, I'm grateful to be alive. It was such a simple thing, but so meaningful. When it came to leave the children, it was very hard. Um, I tried not to cry, but it was tough. And this little girl called Rain came and gave me a huge hug, and she told me, don't cry, be happy for everything. It was a real moment, a real lesson, a seven-year-old little girl who's been through so much, comforting me and telling me to be happy for everything. Um, so when I came back, to the UK, I decided to step away from technology and the um, corporate career and instead to reconnect with what was meaningful to me. Um, there's a great quote from a book called Please Take One Step, which is written by Mike Dixon, and it's all about generosity and connecting with one another. Um, I actually met Mike at a TED event and I had been working voluntarily with him to promote this message, how we can reconnect with generosity, with one another, with doing good things. And because of that, um, we, when I came back, I then had the opportunity to join forces with Mike and create the Rainmaker Foundation. So this is a brand new collaborative charity which is aimed at inspiring generosity. It's about meaning, meaningful connections to make meaningful change. We hope to be able to help Causes all over the world, such as uh, the kids at Dream House, and lots of causes um, both within the UK and abroad. The three key lessons that I learnt that I'd like to share with you are be grateful. Be grateful for everything we've got. It's not always easy to feel grateful. Sometimes we can be in bad moods, the world can seem awful, especially if we're reading newspapers and, and everything that's surrounding us is about fear and negativity. But every one of us has at least something to be grateful for. I'll give you an example. I was on uh, the underground a few days ago. It was very cold and dark, and I was squashed under somebody's armpit. And I thought, OK, what can I be grateful for here? Um, well, it's warm and it's light, so I'm grateful for that. And yet yeah, I'm standing, so actually I'm grateful for my legs. And I can smell, it's not the nicest smell, but I'm grateful for my senses. So 
you know, it, I wasn't ecstatic, but it did change my mindset. The second thing is to reconnect with what makes us happy. It's such a simple thing. Yet, how much of our time do we spend just sitting and thinking about what makes us happy, and then going and doing it? It could, if what makes you happy is fishing, hula hooping, dancing, spending time with friends and family, let's do it. Do the things that make you happy, providing it's legal, of course. <laughs> and the third thing is <coughs> kindness and generosity. So actually, if you feel happy. You're more likely to share that with the people around you, whether it's physically or subliminally. And it's found that kindness is contagious. When you see somebody else doing good, you're more likely to do good, and you'll feel good by doing it, and other people will feel good too. What's more, it's a very strong circle of virtuous goodness. So these things all link together, and if one person Does something nice for somebody else. It's likely to have a ripple effect, and change the environment that we're living in. So instead of trying to define the world with what's bad and what's wrong, let's instead reconnect with what's important to us and what makes us happy. Let's be grateful for what we have, and to share that happiness and kindness with others. If the、uh, the children that I met in Thailand can overcome their ordeals and be happy and grateful, then so can we. I'll leave you with the words of a wise young seven-year-old girl: "Be happy for everything." Thank you.